What's up guys, Justin here with the Fusion Essentials. So in today's video, we're gonna continue our series on getting started with Fusion 360 by talking about some of the more advanced ways that we can add things to our model and also remove things like cutting holes, removing material, other things like that. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so we've gotten into this kind of high level and I wanted to get more specific into this and I may follow up with some example videos in the future. But for now, let's talk a little bit about ways that we can add things to our model. And so we've talked about the first way, right, which is you create a sketch. So I'm just going to create a sketch right here. I'm going to align it with the ground and I'm just going to create a profile. So in this case, I'm just going to tap the R key on my keyboard and I'm just going to draw a one inch by one inch rectangle. And when you're done, you can finish your sketch and then you can use the tools in here to create things using that sketch. Now, the easiest way that we usually do this is going to be using the extrude function. And so the extrude function is basically going to take a flat profile or shape like this and you're going to extrude it into 3D. All right, so it's gonna move that face up and then it's gonna add kind of filler material on the inside here. This is the basis of a lot of things you're gonna create in Fusion 360. Now, we're gonna go ahead and click on OK and we're gonna do the same thing with a non-rectangular shape. So we'll just tap the C key right here to activate the circle tool. We're gonna to finish our sketch and we're going to extrude our circle into a cylinder. So we're gonna extrude this to one inch. We're gonna click on OK. That's gonna be the easiest way to add objects inside of Fusion 360 is just by drawing a flat profile and then extruding them. Now, there are some other tools in here though that allow you to create other kinds of shapes. So one of the interesting ones is the revolve function. So let's say that we were to draw a sketch and in this case, I'm gonna draw it as a vertical sketch right here. And let's just say that it's going to be a profile and I'm just gonna draw a line right here. I will just draw something very simple. So something like this. So I'm going to fill this in so that it has a face. And now that it's closed, I can finish that sketch. Well, in this case, I don't want to take this and extrude it. What I want to do instead is I want to take this and I want to revolve it. So what the revolve tool is going to do is it's going to take a profile and it's going to revolve it around an axis that you set. So in this situation, for example, if I click right here, notice what this is going to do is this is going to revolve this around this central axis at this point. Now, that's fine, but we don't necessarily want this axis to be located way over here. So we're going to look at a way to put our axis somewhere else. So notice how this tells us to select an axis. Well, in this case, we've only got one axis in here, so we want to add another one. So one thing that you can do when you're looking for an axis is basically this is going to work with any line or edge. So for example, I can use the edge of my sketch. And so when I use the edge of my sketch right here, notice how that's going to extrude that around this central point right here. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cancel this one for right now. And I'm actually going to take this sketch and I'm going to move it over, get it away from everything else. And so we could also come in here and within our sketch, we could just right click and edit our sketch. I'm gonna zoom out so that I can see it, but I'm just gonna draw a line right here. And that's just gonna be a part of our sketch, right? Now, if I click on finish, now I can use that line as a point to revolve around as well. So basically what this means is you can use this in order to revolve any profile around an axis. All right, so sometimes you wanna take a profile and you wanna extrude it along a path. And so if we tried to do that right now with the extrude tool, it wouldn't work very well, right? Like this profile would extrude out, but there's no way to really make it turn a corner if we want it to go out and then turn. So um, what we wanna do is we wanna use a specialized function called a sweep. And so what a sweep does is it allows you to take a sketch profile and extrude it along a path. And so what we need in order to do this is we need a path. So I'm just going to create another sketch right here. And I'm just going to draw a path using the line function. So if I draw up here and we'll just draw a little path like this, you could also use this to extrude along like the top face of an object or something like that. But now, I can activate the sweep tool and then, so it's gonna ask me to select a profile right here. Then I can also select a path. 
Well, notice when I do that, what that's going to do is that's going to take this object because it's going to extrude it along the path like this. All right, so next up is a function that's a little more complex. And what it does is it basically takes um, a number of different profiles and it'll generate a face. So, for example, we'll start with that simple one that we already saw right there. So we're going to create a new sketch. We're going to draw a rectangle right here. And then what we need is we need a rectangle that's higher than this, but it might be kind of tricky to create a sketch that's up in the air, right? Because this is just because this is just kind of inferencing to whatever levels we have in here. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna hit the escape key and we're gonna use what's known as an offset plane. An offset plane allows you to set a surface and then it allows you to create a plane which can act as kind of a guide plane a certain distance from that surface. So in this case, I can create an offset plane an inch above my original plane. Well, now when I try to create a sketch, notice how this gives me something that I can kind of align to right here. And in this case, what we're gonna do is we're just going to draw a circle. And we're gonna go with the close enough method for right now, um, just because I wanna do this quickly, but I'm gonna finish this sketch. Well, now if we were to use the loft function, so I'm just going to select loft and it's gonna ask me to add profiles so in this case, I'm gonna add this profile and this profile. Well, notice what this is going to do is this is going to basically automatically create a shape based on those multiple profiles in here. So this can get really interesting because you can do some kind of cool stuff with it. And so what I'm gonna do in this case is I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna edit that sketch and I'm gonna rotate out of this. And what I wanna do is I wanna use the move function in order to create a copy. So I can select that click on create copy, and then click and drag this over like this and click on okay. So I can use this to quickly create copies of objects. Um, and this is going to be something that you can use both in object mode as well as sketch mode. But for right now we're in sketch mode. So I'm gonna go ahead and click right here. Well, what I wanna do is I wanna create a surface across these forms. So I'm going to move down here to loft and it's gonna ask me to add profiles. Well, notice how this isn't going to allow me to add these profiles because they're not closed in. Um, so this isn't going to work. So what we can do though, is we can edit that sketch, draw a line across and fill it in. Do the same thing for the second one. And so we'll go ahead and we'll draw a line across this one. We'll draw a line across this one. So these are closed in shapes, but now if I use the loft function like this, notice how it's going to fill in this surface right here. And the cool thing about this is if we go back into our sketches and we find that sketch that we were just working with, and let's say that we were to edit this. And so let's say we were to come in here and activate the move tool by tapping the M key. And I'm just gonna make some minor changes. I'm gonna try to keep these coplanar in here, but if I make a change and then I click on finish sketch, notice how that surface adjusted because it's referencing those planes right here. Now, let's say that we wanted this to not create a closed in object. Let's say we wanted to use those line surfaces. So I'm just gonna undo this so that I don't have any lines in there anymore. I've just got these surfaces. There is a whole nother tool set in Fusion 360, which we're not going to talk about for now, but it's basically designed, the solid creates solid objects, but the surface is going to have similar features. So I can use loft right here. You'll notice how this one allows me to select these edges, even though they're not closed in, and then it's going to create an object like this. Now that object is only a singular surface with no thickness right here. So um, you don't have a closed in shape, which can cause some issues. But if you do want to create just a flat surface like this, this is going to give you the ability to do that. All right. And then one other function that I want you to be aware of, or maybe it's two functions when we think about it, is the array functionality. And so the array functionality is basically the ability to create copies. And you can do that by using the tool called the pattern tool. And so what the pattern tool is going to do is it's going to allow you to select an object and create a number of copies. So for example, if I mouse over this box right here and I click, and then it's going to ask me to set 
the axis direction. So in this case, I'm just gonna click on this one right here, but notice what this is gonna do is this is going to allow us to create copies. So you can use this to create copies based on the extents or based on spacing. So if you want copies that are spaced at every four inches, you would use spacing. If you wanted this to go a total of eight inches and then start equally spacing copies, you can adjust that this way. You can also adjust number of copies using this tool right here. And you can set this to go both directions if you want it to. Um, in this case, I don't necessarily want that, but that is a function that's in here. But then we also have the ability, if we want, to create copies in another direction. And then you can do the same thing, right? You can set a number of copies that are in here, and this is going to automatically adjust your spacing. So this is a powerful way of creating multiple copies in your model. Now, there are some interesting functions in here for other kinds of patterns. So for example, say that I wanted to create a number of these cylinders along a path, what I could do is I could create a sketch and I could draw a path. So we're gonna pick a fit point spline right here. We're gonna go ahead, we're just gonna make a copy up to here and hit the enter key. We'll notice how there's a function in our solid mode for creating a pattern along a path. So what you do is you select your object, you select your path, and then that's going to allow you to set number of copies along the path. So notice how I can move my mouse and I can set this to go all the way to the end. I can set it so that it goes partially along the path. Then I can also adjust number of copies either by using this slider or by adjusting the length that's in here. So again, you could set this by spacing if you wanted to. So create one of these objects every three inches, for example, and it'll do that. You can type in a value, hit the enter key, and you're good to go. So that's a really interesting way of creating objects along paths if you need to do that. All right, so this video is getting a little long, but um, what I wanna do is now let's talk about some ways that you can remove materials from your objects. Now, one of the things that you might have noticed is if you ever take an object and extrude it where another object is in the same location, what you might notice is you might get this red box in here and you can see that this is actually removing material from this box. Now this is something that you can drive using the operation over here on the right hand side. So for example, I might want to create a box where these two join together into a singular object. So if I click OK, notice how now these are one body because they're joined together. But if we extrude this up, and we select the option for cut, what that's gonna do is that's gonna use this object to remove material in the other object. So anytime two objects intersect, you're going to get the option for cut, join, or create new body. So let's say for example that I was to create a coil right in the middle of all of these boxes. So a little bit chaotic, but let's say that we were to do it. So we're gonna create a coil right here and you can kind of see what this is doing. Notice how wherever this coil intersects with these boxes, this is removing material. So anytime your objects and one object intersects with another when you're creating it, you're going to get the option for cut. Now, I will say, I don't think this happens if you're using the surface function because this is kind of using a Boolean functionality in here, but you can use objects to cut holes in other objects really quickly. Now, another thing you could do with this is you can also draw more complex profiles. So let's say for example, that I wanted kind of an inset in this object. Well, I could draw a circle along this surface and notice how I can select this and it split this up, which is perfect. So I can use this in order to remove the material on this object using that cut functionality. And so one place this gets interesting is you can also use this as a part of the revolve function. So let's say, for example, that I wanted to create a plane that was perpendicular with this object. Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna construct a tangent plane on this object right here. And then from there, I'm gonna create an offset plane in the middle of this object. By the way, if you know an easier or faster way to do that, let me know. But I'm gonna go ahead and click on okay. And then this plane right here under construction, I'm gonna go ahead and hide 
because I don't need it right now. And so what I want to do is I want to create a sketch on this surface and I just want to draw a rectangle like this, but then I want to take that rectangle and I want to create an array of rectangles. So we're just going to create a rectangular pattern. I'm going to select this object and I'm going to create an array right here. And then we're going to click on OK. What we've done is we've created multiple profiles that are in here. Well, now we can use the revolve function in order to remove materials. So I'm going to select these three objects. I'm going to look for an axis and I'm going to click right here and notice how it's going to use that circle as our axis. But notice what this does is this goes through and this revolves this object along a surface and anywhere those intersect, it's removing those materials. So you can use this in order to really quickly remove materials on complex surfaces, just like this. All right, so one other really powerful tool that you need to know about if you're gonna be creating objects like this is the whole tool. So what the whole tool is going to do is it's gonna allow you to select an object. So I'm going to click on this surface right here and I'm going to click and drag this until I find this central point. But what this is going to do is this is going to give you the ability to cut a hole. And so notice how we have a bunch of different options in here. This tool is kind of optimized for creating things for like connectors. But notice how I can move this up or down in order to set the depth of the hole. And you can also set if the hole is going to have a drill point on it like this or if it's just going to be flat. And you can also set if the hole is gonna be tapped or not um, with uh, different kinds of screw threads. So notice how I can kind of like scroll my mouse over here, or I can also adjust this using these tools right here. But this is super valuable because you could set this to be just a simple hole, or you can set it to be counter bore or countersink. And you can adjust the width of that countersink using this slider right here. So very powerful and obviously optimized for creating screw holes, threaded holes, other things like that. Now, one thing that you might notice is if we click on OK right now and you look at these threads, they just have kind of a thread material applied to them. However, Fusion 360 has a tool in here designed to help you take a hole like this and you can actually adjust the threads. So I can set this to be like real world thread sizes or hole sizes like this. Notice how these are all adjustable, but then there's also an option up here to actually model out those threads. So if you were to 3D print this, this would actually create this with these little threaded pieces in here. Now be careful with that. If you're just doing this visually, there's no reason to do that right? So there's, there's no reason to model out the threads unless you're actually going to print out the threads. The visuals should be just fine. And so remember that with all the functions in Fusion 360, you can right click in here and you can edit them. So any of these operations that we've done can be edited, but you can come in here and you can adjust the direction of the threads. You can um, really do whatever you want with this once you've created it and you can come back and adjust it. And because Fusion 360 is a smart program, um, it's going to know what to do with that so that you can can easily make changes and adjustments. So that's some high level tools for adding and modeling objects as well as removing materials and cutting holes. Leave a comment below and let me know if you have any questions. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.